Good afternoon, everyone. Wow, this is a blockbuster seminar. Coming in and seeing the crowd, I thought it's the DG's annual seminar. <laughs> so, uh, are there seats, more seats here? No, really blockbuster. So, uh, first of all, I want to thank the seminar committee for inviting me to do the introduction for Dr. Glenn Gregorio. Uh, it's really a great pleasure for me. And uh, as you can see at the first slide, uh, Dr. Gregorio is uh, our senior scientist too at the Plant Breeding um, and Genetics Division. He has been uh, working on salinity and problem soil tolerance rate development and uh, having assumed also as the acting global coordinator for INGER and MEP. Dr. Gregorio earned his uh, master's degree and PhD degree from the University of the Philippines. And as you can see here, uh, his list of uh, experience and higher uh, research achievements since he joined Erie in 1986. Well, if you think that I was invited to summarize his long, long CV and to enumerate his achievements, you're wrong. Uh, I'm not a good summary, uh, summarizing CV or reading the long CV, but uh, I've been invited and requested by Glenn himself to do the introduction because he thinks I'm a good friend that would not compromise his integrity and his dignity <laughs> during introduction, as has been experienced in the past uh, speakers. <laughs> so. Glenn has been a, a colleague since 1986, a decade after I, uh, after I uh, joined Erie. He was working with Dr. Sinadira, and I was also working on soil problems, and that started the working relationship with Glenn. one of the very few who had seen Glenn rise to his professional ladder. Since he joined 1986, I've seen him work very hard as a research aide and then rose up to be a scientist and then senior scientist. During this time, uh, during his uh, professional stint at Erie, he has us uh, given, contributed to the Variet released varieties here in the Philippines as well in other countries, uh, particularly in the uh, varieties for um, soil problems tolerance, salinity. If uh, many of you may not know that uh, it was Glenn who started also some work on uh, nutritious or healthy rice. Uh, I remember then that uh, Dr. Sinadira uh, had instructed Glenn and myself to do a research on high zinc rice and high iron rice. So Glenn had also uh, proceeded to work on the high iron rice, working with uh, that until uh, for, for, for several years, until he was uh, brought to uh, be a plant breeder in Africa. So the results of those breeding work have contributed various uh, varieties for salinity and cool elevation in the Philippines as in other countries as I have mentioned. And um, he had also been uh, the mentor for more than 20 PhD students, also more than 20 MS, MS students and uh, several postdoctoral fellows. Um, well, he had also been uh, acting always acting deputy, division head, acting coordinator of MEP, and everyone who is not available, he would be act on his behalf. <laughs> so there was a time that he was complaining to me that he was already overacting. <laughs> but I'm not only uh, a witness to the achievements of Glenn as he moved from research aide to senior scientist, I was also a witness to the loss of his hair. <laughs> As you would notice, 
in those pictures. But apparently, uh, Glenn had uh, a way of really avoiding uh, the loss of hair. If you know, if you notice, aside from Mangandoy in the GRC, Glenn is the next most photographed ear staff. So uh, he would always have a close-up minus his hair or a cap when he is photographed. Um, just to have, somebody told me, the, the Center Committee asked me to mention some of the experiences with Glenn, but Glenn has been working with me in, in the salinity problem and skin deficiency problem, and that was taken in way back in the 1980s, and I've learned a lot from Glenn, being so junior from me, I've learned a lot about plant breeding, and I hope he learned about soils. <laughs> So um, thank you, Glenn, for that. And however, I also learned a lot about family relations. Although he taught me about breeding, I haven't adopted that to the family relations as well as he did. <laughs> so uh, to give more time to Glenn's uh, seminar, this afternoon seminar of Glenn is the dream of a rice breeder. So we'll have to listen to Glenn on what his uh, dreams about not only rice but other crops. But uh, there's one dream that I don't think he had shared with you. As a very close friend, he had shared, I think he only shared his dream to me. And this is being the president of the Philippines. <laughs> Uh, so let's so let's listen to Glenn Glenn's dream and um, so I hope uh, just just the last word Glenn's Glenn had a seminar uh, to if some members yesterday and I was there I had a, also had the pleasure of listening to his seminar yesterday about naming rice varieties and it was hilarious. And I thought, you know, he should give another seminar on that. And the thing that I want to request the audience right now is to be, to ask also questions as much as they did yesterday. Uh, so we expect questions at the end of the seminar. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Corinta. I'm going near and near to you because you might reveal some other secrets that we are sharing. Okay, thank you for everyone. I don't know if you are excited that I'm giving Giri or are you excited about what I'm telling or what's my forecast of what's happening in the next 10 to 20 years. Okay, now I'm, I'm telling you my dreams of the rice feeder. I have a dream that in 1963 were the popular Martin Luther King. That's, but now, I'll, I'll be talking more on the dreams that I have, then after that, I'll show you the dreams of the future. Okay, now, I have a complete picture. I'm not activating my archives here. Okay? So you, by, by this picture, I could always tell the whole seminar. So I'm going to just show you the step by step, but I'll give you the details of when they came, when they got married, when they got... I, I'm not talking about my hair here or the, lock, or the lack of it, but I'll be talking, this is the picture of my IDs at Uri, okay? And this is my first picture when I crossed the railroad and joined Uri in 1986, and I have one bag with me, and now I'm leaving Uri with a whole gang of kids and a caravan of materials. So, and this is my second picture where I start dreaming. <laughs> so that's the time I start dreaming. But of course you are just excited and swing around and enjoying things. And that is the time when I become a certain assistant that I start to be a dreaming. So 
all these have, have a story. This is when I was a research aide. This is when I was a uh, uh, research assistant, senior research assistant. Then they kick me out and make a, a consultant. <laughs> then, I be, uh, then I become a postdoc. Then after postdoc, I become again a consultant. Then become an IRF, International Research Fellow. Then I'll, I become a, a consultant again. <laughs> then become a send me to Africa. <laughs> then after that, I become a senior scientist. Now I'm living at this stage. Okay, so that's the story. Any question? <laughs> okay, I always said, as my mentor said also, readers are like painters. Okay? Of course, readers should be dreamers, visionaries. If you're not a dreamer, don't be a reader. Be a politician. <laughs> so readers are like painters. First, what's the definition of plant breeding? Plant breeding is genetically manipulating plants for human needs. So all are GMO. It's genetically modified. Everything is genetically modified. Every new are genetically modified. It's a mixture of different genes. Plant breeding is an art and science. So don't miss that one. It's an art. First, it's not science and art. It's an art and science. So you should be a dreamer. That's why I always say plant reading is a little bit of arithmetic and a lot of imaginations. Okay? And the other, as a painter, no, this is my lesson to everyone. No two plant readers will work on a single masterpiece. They will just fight. Okay? So a plant reader should have one masterpiece. That's a lesson for everyone. The second is every discipline will offer color to plant breeders. If you are a physiologist, you show the mechanism, you have tools, everything. So it's the plant breeder who choose what color you want. So don't force too much, because breeders are dreamers. They take their time and use your, your, your tools. And of course, plant breeders are dreamers. <coughs> My first dream, I want a salt proof rice. Rice that divides salt. Before I'm looking, what, in what area you can see that rice and salt are, are going together? You can see that only in a salt shaker. <laughs> but my dream really is to have a very salt plant rice that grow in a shaker. That's my first dream, very idealistic. That's why I'm closing my eyes there. The second dream is to catch the salty gene in action. That's where I've done my MS and my PhD on catching the genes in action, which technically I caught it, and a lot of people helped me out to, 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 to use it and apply it, which I'll be showing you later. The third dream is as Dr. Sanadira before, they're saying, 50 years ago, we are working on Pukali. Pukali is the traditional variety. And it's the only one called and price before. 50 years ago, they worked in Pukali. Up to now, they are working on Pukali. But I will say, uh, now, we have already the FL478. It's not 378, although 378 is a uh, tolerant variety. FL478 is very tolerant more than Pukali. So that's an achievement that has been uh, accomplished or fulfilled. This is, uh, sorry. <coughs> This is FL478. This is part of my PhD thesis. And now this becomes the check to all over the world for salt tolerance at the city stage. So my dream has, was, has already fulfilled in, in some sense. And based on that, this is also my dream when I assume to lead the salt tolerance uh, reading project that I said in the year 2010, that was year 2000, 10 years, target Year 2010 target contribution expectation from breeding and crop management research to achieve targets in saline and problem soils. I always say it's our target is 3.3 and the yield increase is more than 50% and contribution for breeding is 50 and crop management is 50. Crop and management we have to divide the daily management and the crop management. So all the rest, uh, this is my dream to show that it's 60 million hectares for feed efficiency in the 
improvement in more than 25% zinc deficiency and acid sulfate was the instability and problem solved. So let's look at this one. I'll show you the proof that it has been achieved. Like this vinadan 8, I'll just show you an example. This is uh, planted in, released in Bangladesh. What makes it very special to me because IR6, 66946, that's 3R, that's 149, that's 1, that's 1 is FL349. This is part of my mapping population when this is. So I have a bonus. I got the most salt plant variety, a salt plant line, FL478, and I have a sister line that is released as a variety. So what bonus you could get? more than this one. So it's more than your thesis, we expanded it more, we were, we were able to get a product. And another one is lately, just this last year, we have this Salinas 11, NSEC RC2013, RC226. This is planted, was planted in Bohol, and the farmer, native farmer was crying because it has been two cropping season has no crop, it was devastated by seawater inclusion. And only this time, all the other farm area had been affected by salinity, and only this variety is released lately in 2013, was able to produce grains and eat beautiful. And the good thing is this is also, accidentally this is a red rice. So now the, the irrigated, uh, Irrigated rice area, they are starting planting this one as a modern red rice. So they are fetching additional five pesos more than the original harvest that they have. So that's the bonus that makes the dream really come true. And we have a new source of tolerance now. Before we are looking for curry, now we have, look at this one. Iron region is a, a normal area, but this has a productive state, you can see. This one is very tolerant. So this is the magic now. JJ, good name JJ, we'll just call it Jumbo Jet for, for short. Sure. <laughs> but that's the old name there. So we achieved this one. And this one is, I showed this before, just to show you that just to show you that we have improved the yield from this is from three locations in Bangladesh. You can see here, these are three locations, and you can see the Breeder 47, this is the salt land variety, a dealing bread salt land variety in Bangladesh, and this is the popular variety. Under normal, under less than EC4, this is a little bit. So, okay, just to give an example of the measure of salinity is electrical conductivity. To give you an idea, the conductivity of seawater is about 50 to 54. The same as your sweat. The same as your tears. I don't mention other fluids, but <laughs> you have the same. And and rice starts to starts to die at easy port. Okay? An easy drug is the threshold. Okay, if you have your soup, if you have your silicon soup, it's usually easy 25, 26, up to 30. Okay, just to give you an idea. So rice is very sensitive to salinity. So to, to, to show you here, under moderate, low, almost normal, the yield of the salt and variety is pretty very good, very high. It has a 1.3 tons per hectare difference. Under mild salinity, that's 22%. Under mild salinity, you have two tons difference. And that's about 43%. Under very high salinity, you can see 2.7 tons difference. And that's 100% yield advantage. So just to show you that we have achieved the salt tolerance, but I'm not just talking about that one. Now this is another example. This is 21 villages in, in, in India. And this has been released as a variety as CR Dan 405. And look at this one. It has the, 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 the variety there, it has an Increase of average of 3.3, 3.5 tons per hectare. About the salt land line is 4.9 tons per hectare. This is 10 to 118 percent yield advantage for average of 45. So we are already there, 50 percent yield advantage. And to make it clearer, management, crop management, and 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 variety. If you have farmers variety, 
only improve farmers' variety and farmers' management. It has a yield of 1.77 tons per hectare. Improved management, farmers' variety becomes 2 tons per hectare, which is increase of 16%. If you have improved variety, farmers' management has 3 tons per hectare, which is 69%. By the way, the improved management here is only the seed bed. So that's why it's only 16%. And if you have improved variety and improved management, it will go up to 118%. So it's not 1 plus 1 equals to 2, it's 1 plus 1 equals to 3. So tolerant varieties respond better to improve crop and nutrient management, thus increase yield and stabilize productivity. Okay, sorry, I, I have to show this to everyone because this paper, every lecture I have, I always show this one. What is salinity tolerance and other stresses? How to make it simplified? I always say salinity doesn't occur alone. It's always associated with all other stresses. You're going to see any area where salinity is only a problem. It's always associated with other stress. So that you know in the problem is only half of the solution. So know the problem and see, usually in saline areas you have acid. Acid saline area. And if you have acid saline area, you have phosphorus and zinc deficiency. And if you have acid saline area, you have iron and aluminum toxicity. If you have acid sulfate area, you have phosphorus and zinc deficiency. And you have iron and sulfide toxicity. And if you have acid saline pixel, that is usually in 